Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Um, we are the Church of Evolutionary Love, and our mission is a planetary awakening in love through a unique self-symphony. Together we declare that the last day of the old face of evolution is honored as the first day of the new face of creation. I am Christina Amalong, and it is so wildly good to be with everyone here all over the world. I see Denise and Jill and Terry and Oriana, Jackie and Jen. Welcome, welcome. In Evolutionary Church, we are connected, we are whole, and we're expressions of the entire process of creation. We are activating a new humanity and we are awakening as a new species, homo amor. We are a church, a synagogue, a mosque, a temple, a zendo. We're all of it. No one is excluded. Everyone is included and we come together to attune to the evolutionary impulse awakening in each of us. Welcome home, everyone. We're so delighted to be with you today in week 157 of Evolutionary Church. If you haven't already, open up your chat box, please. Use the chat function to say hi and let us know where you're from. And make sure that you're using the chat function on all panelists and attendees and not just all panelists. As always, spread the love. Let everyone know about Evolutionary Church. We're doing this primarily through word of mouth. If you haven't subscribed already to our YouTube channel, I encourage you to do that. We are the Church of Evolutionary Love and all of our replays are available on YouTube. Like our Facebook page, facebook.com Evolutionary Church. And right now we are live on Facebook. So if you go to your notifications, it's real easy just to hit share so that your friends on Facebook can check us out too. All right, and hello to everyone out there on Facebook. Um, with that, I give you a bit of what to expect over this next hour. We always begin with a Dharma recap, pulling together some of the core memes that Dr. Mark and Barbara shared during the week before. And then Mark will set our intention. And then today, Shahat will do resonance of the code that we're working with. After that, we move into prayer and then into our sermons for the day, and we close around the top of the hour. In the Dharma recap, I use the precise phrases that Dr. Mark and or Barbara used to formulate our new Dharma. And virtually the entire Dharma recap is direct quotes. As Mark and Barbara often say, quote, we are creating a language, uh, uh, I'll start over, quote, we are creating together a new field of language. It is only through a new field of language we can create the new world, unquote. These phrases often took them decades to formulate precisely. Each Dharmic phrase is a key that opens a door to essence and to our own activation as outrageous lovers committing outrageous acts of love. With that, I invite us into our Dharma recap for today where I'm recapitulating the Dharma from last week and again, where I'll put the key Dharma phrases in quotes. So here we go. Quote, I am God in evolution, unquote. We, you, all of us, the entire force of creation. Think about the genius it took to go the 13.7 billion years to me and you and now at this very crossroads of evolution where the system is going towards de-evolution and the system could rise into the next stage of evolution. Every single individual is on that shift point. We are held accountable because we count. We are held accountable because our lives matter infinitely. The ever deepening realization of this moment in time, this moment between de-evolution and evolution is that we can come together as unique self-symphonies and not just as individuals. 
we can actually realize that by taking our unique risks and playing our unique instrument, we become part of the self-organizing universe and we catalyze the self-organizing universe. Isn't that amazing? It's so exciting. The unique risk is to put all of ourselves on the line. We don't know how it's gonna go, but we are willing. We are willing to extend our hands knowing full well that our hands might be rejected or they might be held. What does it take for the infinity of intimacy to create a world? for the infinity to manifest finitude in the finite? What is God doing? The essence of reality is that God is saying, I'm gonna take my unique divine risks. I am the infinity of power. I am the presidents of all presidents. I am in charge of everything and yet, I've still gotta take the risk to love and to love more. I can't just love by myself in the infinite cosmos. I've got a manifest reality. I've got to extend my hand to finitude that I've manifested and I've got to say, will you take my hand? Will you love with me? Will you create with me? Will you cry with me? Will you laugh with me? Last week, Mark asked us to imagine the feeling of divinity when we say, no, God, I'm not going to take my unique risk with you. I can't do it. I can't take care of the larger whole. I can't serve the most amount of people. And if you remember last week, there was beautiful heartbreak at that moment. Imagine a cascading wave building throughout the world. Feel going the whole way. As Barbara said last week, quote, Evolution is concerned more with purpose than with species. The purpose of each of us is, I am God and evolution, unquote. We can catalyze. There's no longer a split between politics and religion. The One World Church is a political body and a new political party is a religious body. We've got to get over that split. Yes, there's a separation between church and state, but not between politics and religion. Religion, relay guerre, to connect with the whole thing and to know that my outrageous acts of love, which I take as a function and an expression of my unique self, are cells in the self-organizing universe in the unique self symphony that can change the whole thing. With that, I invite us to more deeply enter into the holy and sacred space of evolutionary church. And I turn my word to you, beloved Dr. Mark. Welcome, thank you, Christina Tahel. Yes, 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 yes. And Dharma recaps, friends, are so important, right? Really. Right. And, and I've asked, I asked Lisa and I asked Christina to hell to really take the exact phrases that we used last week, because when we come together, right, as a community and we love each other, then the word comes through clearly. Right. And, and when the word comes through clearly, we can actually feel, right, a new prophecy emerging. But the prophecy, the prophets are all of us. Right? The prophets are all of us when we participate together and when we dedicate our lives, just like we can all be physicists, we can all be prophets of the new word. Right? Prophecy is not the elite, but just like to be a great physicist, you got to dedicate your entire life, right? everything. Right? Everything has to be, right? I want to clarify the word as it moves in me. Right? It's not I'm running my business, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. No, no. Right? It's full on. Right? And that's, that's the place where I was so delighted to join Genius with Barbara, right? Is that I met with Barbara and in her words, right? Someone that we vibrated on the, on the same frequency. And, and we, we were just so delighted to spend all of our lives, right? Every waking moment and every sleeping moment trying to clarify the Dharma, right? Right. But I want to invite everyone to step in. Not because you have your Dharma just because you said it. No, not true. But if you're willing to step in full on, right, read day and night, 
right? Clarify your motives, own your shadow, right? Make mistakes, get up again, right? Right, pray day and night, right? You wanna step all in, you wanna train, well then you're gonna unmute myself. Hello, everyone. It looks like Mark has uh, frozen. So um, I, I think what I'll do is I'll put on uh, a more while we wait for Mark to come back. And if I have to stop it in the meantime, I will. All right. So here we go. Amora, 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 Oh my God. Thank you so much. We got a little knocked off here. We're in um, Pacific Grove, Carmel, Santa Cruz. Suzette is in Santa Cruz. They lost power for two days. And I thought we actually lost the power on the grid, but it seems to have come back. Oh my God. Welcome everyone. Amor, amor. Thank you, Mosa. So I just want to finish that last thought. And if for whatever reason I get knocked off here, right, Shahati, you'll pick up and we'll read the code and we'll practice unique risk, but I think we're okay. Okay, so welcome everyone. Welcome, okay? Wow. So I was in the middle of setting intention. So here's the intention. Are we ready? Here's the intention. Every single person can participate in the new prophecy. And what prophecy means is, is that actually it's not just facial recognition software. It's not the algorithm of artificial intelligence, that actually there's a deeper algorithm of intimacy, which is the heart core and heart desire of cosmos that lives uniquely in me, as me, and through me. I am a unique expression of the standing and propagating waves of cosmos, which are configurations of intimacy, and I am a vessel, a Merkava, right? I am a chariot, right? I am a, an incarnation that holds a unique spark of the God voice. And if I'm committed to accessing that God voice, right? Not casual. It's not a, a casual church service. It's not a casual synagogue. It's not a quick, you know, Islamic moment. It's not a secular mo humanist moment. It's not I spend a weekend at Esalen. Right? I'm actually committed, right? The commitment of my lifetime, which is the commitment of a human being, is to clarify the God voice that lives in me and to actually access the unique spark of that God voice, then I will have a prophecy to speak that the entire world needs to have spoken. Now, sometimes the prophecy is spoken, right, as the Sermon on the Mount. It's spoken atop the mountain. Sometimes it's under the Bodhi tree. And sometimes the prophecy is spoken in the kitchen late at night 
between lovers in the bedroom at 4 a.m. Sometimes it's spoken to our children in the car as we're picking them up, them up from carpool. Sometimes it's spoken at a restaurant with a friend. Right? The prophecy has many places. Right? There are many great speeches to have. One of the books I got most upset about was a book by William Sapphire called Great Speeches in History, which were only speeches by famous people in public spaces. That's not how it works. Right? The word prophet means navi in Hebrew. Navi. Do you remember Avatar, James Cameron, right? The Navi, and he's actually playing with the Hebrew. And Navi comes from the word Niv, and Niv means the speech, the speech that lives in you, the voice that lives in you. The, and, I, and catch this word, the unique voice that is yearning to come through you, the unique voice that's yearning to be spoken by you, right? It's that unique voice that reality is waiting for. And we're, we're going to resonate today, and, and I, I got knocked off of church, right, by the, the power grids, and the power grids have empowered us back in church, so I want to check, right, with Christina to Helen Schott. You have not resonated the code yet? So give me a, give me in the chat box, that a yes or a no. Have we resonated the code yet? No. Perfect. Thank you. Awesome. So what we're going to do now is we're going to resonate the code, but first we're going to set our intention, okay? And, and are, you willing to, are you willing to set this intention audaciously with me this week? Can we go like all the way in this lifetime? So who's willing? Who's willing to go all the way in this lifetime, right? To actually audaciously set an intention, right? Unlike any other. Okay, you ready? Are you ready? Okay, are you willing to be a prophet? Right? And someone, if you can write it in the chat box, who's willing to write it in the chat box? Write, write our question in the chat box. Are you willing to be a prophet? And we're gonna pick that up. Who's willing to write first the question? First write the question. Are you willing? So we get the question straight. Are you willing to be a prophet? Okay, you ready? So let's have a drum roll all over the world. All over the world. We're joining all over the world. We're creating the church of evolutionary love, which is the church of the incarnation of the unfolding and evolving word of the divine. As we wake up as evolution, as evolution lives in us, as us and through us, as we realize that actually in the next moment, right, our desire is evolution's desire. So we're asking one question. Are you willing to clarify the unique God spark? that lives in you as you and through you, that all of evolution conspired and breathed for billions of years to manifest the unique configuration of intimacy and desire. That is the unique gorgeousness and tenderness of your heart. That's the unique audacity and wonder of your being. That is the radical amazement of God, God is seen through your eyes. That is, right, the statement, I am evolutionary desire. I am evolutionary love. I'm a unique configuration of evolutionary love and desire, and I have a word to speak. And that word is important, and that word matters. And my speaking my word matters. So the question is this week, right? Are we ready? Are you willing to be a prophet? Okay, so here we go. Here we go. Do we have any yeses? Right, I'm right. Are you willing to be a prophet? If you've written yes, write it again. Because you can't say yes only once. We're saying yes again and again and again. Are you willing to be a prophet? Yes! Bore Nivsvatayim, God creates the unique voice. When I access my unique voice, then I'm a prophet. And what we're going to talk about this week is literally the instruction manual for the new human. And the new human is not some weird new species. The new human is the fulfillment of Homo sapien. We want to become Homo Amor. Homo Amor is the fulfillment of Homo sapien. Right, Homo sapien, that genus of human being. Homo amor is the human being who speaks the unique God spark heart voice that lives in them, as them, and through them, and knows, Homo amor knows my word matters. Reality needs my word. There's not one prophet. In the old world, there was one prophet. But you can't be a prophet just by saying something. You got to be a prophet because you're radically committed. Imagine you want to be this bodybuilder, and you want to kind of like lift, push that weight up, but you don't train. Right? She's like, okay, here I go, Mr. Atlas. You remember Mr. Atlas in the comic books when some of us were growing up? Right? You're Mr. Atlas. Okay? But you never trained. Right? So to be a prophet, you have to train. Right? So the church, the, the one church, we call it the one church, many paths, one mountain. The one church, the one church. Right? And everyone's part of the one church. Right? Many paths, one mountain. So what are we? We are a training school for prophets. We want to speak prophecy together. And prophecy is your unique voice, clarify. And there's no way that Barbara can speak your prophecy. And no way that Mark can speak your prophecy. And no way that 
right? That any of us can speak each other's prophecy. But we got to clarify. We got to train. And train means we open our hearts again and again. Train means we never leave the table. Train means we integrate our shadow, right? Train means right, that we, we, we integrate and, and take into ourselves the split off parts of ourselves and we make ourselves whole, right? So, oh my God, we're going to be a kingdom of prophets and a holy nation. And that's what the one church is. We are a kingdom of prophets and a holy nation and everyone is welcome. Everyone who wants to cross train with us and it's cross training. We've got to train in our minds, our soma, right, our body, our heart, right, our psychology, right, our shadow work, right, our physics, our chemistry, our molecular biology. We've got to train the great traditions, all the pre-modern, modern, and post-modern. We are training. What are we? We're a boot camp, right, for new prophets, and we need new prophecy, right? Isaiah, Ezekiel, Lao Tzu, Chung Sa, right? What did Chung Sa say? He said, I come to speak dangerous words, right? I ask only that you listen dangerously. So are we willing to listen dangerously? That's our intention for this week. Our intention is to listen dangerously. Our intention is to be evolution. I am evolution. I'm a unique configuration of evolutionary love. I am the prophet of evolution. Right? I am the prophet. And my voice is good. And my voice is trustable. You can trust my voice. Right? Like, wow. Wow. Do you remember our chant? Right to speak of your love in the morning and to trust you in the night. So it's like that. So I'm so delighted to turn the word to Shahat, who's, who's standing in for David, right? Who can't be with us this week, but he's completely with us in heart, mind, and body. Is it? He's at a special conference. And I turn the word to Shahat, who's going to resonate the code, which is part of the training for the access of the new prophet that lives in us. And I turn the word with so much delight, with so much honor to you, Shahati. Yes. Hello, my friends. My name is Shahat. I am running the Europe, lots of the Europe activities, the festival, the Dharma Circle. And I am totally honored and blessed to be with you and to be resonating this week's code. And this week's quote is that the field of intimacy and desire is seamless, but not featureless. The field is always moving towards greater intimacy. And we are each unique features of the larger field of intimacy and desire. That means we are each a unique configuration of intimacy and desire that is part of this larger field. The field itself is generating a new structure of intimacy, which is the unique self symphony. To join the field and play our instrument in the unique self symphony, we must be willing to take your unique risk. You and me, we must be willing to take our unique risk. And your unique risk is always something that you can easily, in the public realm, get away with, with not doing. Only you know that it's there to be answered. You access your unique risk through deep listening in the quiet, through prayer, or through asking a group of close friends who know you well what it might be. We're accountable in life for only one thing. Did we take our unique risk that all of reality needs us to take? And you don't take your unique risk once. You take your unique risk every day. Yay. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Shahati. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And we're going to now, we're a little bit out of our order of service because we had a little PG&E right? Electronic grid. Now we're back. So we're going to move directly into prayer. Okay. Now what's the relationship? What's the relationship between prayer and prophecy? So this is now piece two, right? So our first conversation today was about being a prophet and it's about setting our intention, the realization I can be a prophet, right? And remember Khalil Gibran, right? Who wrote that beautiful book, The Prophet, right? That's what Khalil Gibran understood. He understood that 
prophecy needs to be democratized. It's the democratization of prophecy. But again, not as a casual encounter. There's no casual sex and there's no casual prophecy. And there's no casual love, right? It's never casual. It does, doesn't work that way, right? It's intentional. It's alive, right? It's with the full feeling tone and gravitas, right? And radical joy and responsibility of cosmos moving in me. That's what it means to be a prophet, okay? And each of us has that unique God spark, that unique goddess spark, which is the word. And we speak that word not only in the public places, we speak that word in the private places. So as Christina Tahel is talking to her daughter, Reina, she might be speaking prophecy, right? And as Shoshana Suzette was at the football game yesterday, she might be speaking prophecy at a particular moment. And as Terry, right, is talking to Topher, he might be speaking prophecy, right? Does everyone understand that? And as Christina is giving the de-armoring workshop in New York, she's speaking prophecy. When you speak from your clarified God voice, and you can actually feel when you're speaking from that voice, right? And so we're here today to actually access how we do that. So now we're about to go into prayer. So here's our question. Okay, part two, right? Part two. Right? What's the difference? What's the relationship between prayer and prophecy? Okay? So you remember prayer, we know here, right? Prayer, say the next line with me. Prayer's not, you know, the exact next words, right? These are our words. Prayer's not a cosmic vending machine where I put in a quarter and get out a shiny new horse or horse and buggy, right? Or a car, right? Prayer is the realization that reality is not only impersonal, reality is ultimately personal. So beyond the impersonal forces of cosmos, there's a deeper dimension, which is infinitely personal. So it's not as some people and most people actually taught spirituality. First, you've got the human personality that's personal. Then you've got the impersonal forces of cosmos, including love and consciousness and awareness. No, you've got the human personality, right? Which is a refraction, a fractal-like refraction of the higher personal. So level one, human personality, personal. Then you've got the, what we call the impersonal, but I'd rather call it the transpersonal impersonal, which are the, the force of evolutionary love, the third person of God, the forces of physics, the forces of chemistry, right? The strong and the weak, the electromagnetic, right? right? These, these strong and weak nuclear electromagnetic gravitational, right? These four forces that are operating every place in cosmos and the force of Eros that animates all four of those forces. Right, so that's right. Does everyone understand? That's third person of God. That's the impersonal, right, or the impersonal transpersonal. But then, okay, right, let's catch this garment. It's gorgeous. Catch this wave. Then there's the suprapersonal, and it's personal plus, and right? it's beyond the impersonal transpersonal. It's the suprapersonal. That's the infinite person of all of cosmos. It's all personal. There's a face of God, which is not just the forces of physics, but in hearing in that. And in all those forces is an actual intelligence and consciousness of cosmos, right? In, in hearing in the fractal waves and the standing and propagating waves of cosmos, right? Which are the vibrational field of cosmos, right? The, and that field, right? There's an, a personal animating intelligence. And in that personal animating intelligence is the second face of God, right? It's the infinity of intimacy. So in prayer, right? In prayer, we initiate and we invoke, right? We turn through our own yearning for intimacy, through our own desire to be the God voice, through our own desire to be fully realized, through, through our own desire to wake up out of the torporitic slumber, right, of our routine, right? To move beyond banality, right? To our true rapture and greatness, right? We, we that yearning in us, that inconsolable longing, right? To be more and to be our authentic selves, to be actually the unique configuration of self with a capital S that is us, right? We initiate, we invoke. In prayer, the intimacy that lives in us yearns for the infinity of intimacy to hold us. We come to prayer audaciously and as a child, right? As a child, and we say, God, God us, hold me. Infinity of intimacy, love me. So in prayer, we initiate, we invoke. In prophecy, when God speaks to us, in prophecy, right, right, we're receiving God, right? We're actually listening. God initiates and God invokes. 
and we're receiving, right? To be a prophet is to clarify your unique self, to get so clear that you actually can hear the voice of God. And how you hear that voice of God, we're going to talk about in today's sermon. But you get so quiet, you get so clarified, right? You get so still that the dynamic explosion of the God voice merges, awakens from the stillness. And what I'm describing is not metaphor. It's not metaphor. This is the actual physics of cosmos. I've experienced it in my life time and time again. This is the inner physics of the great lineages. This is how we do it. Right? So in prophecy, God initiates and God invokes. And we're so quiet that we receive God loving us open. We're loved open. We're fucked open by the divine. Right? And it's fierce. Right? And in prayer, we turn to God and we say, God, we're going to come before you open, naked, and vulnerable. We want to be held by you. Right? We, we, we say to God, give me everything, right? because prayer affirms the dignity of our personal need. And we say, God, give me everything so I can give you everything. And when we turn to God with that raw vulnerability, with that nakedness of heart, we're loving God open. We're fucking God open. Right? The, the actual sacred text says, right? The God force yearns, right? lusts for our naked, open heart, right? wanting right, to be received. Right, by the divine, because that's our true yearning. And the divine is all of it. It's all of authenticity. Right? So in this moment, we come before God, and we actually bring before God our holy and our broken hallelujah. Nothing left out. Right? Take us inside. Leonard, amen. Oh my God. Now I've heard there was a secret chord that David played, and it pleased the Lord. But you don't really care for music, do you? It goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall, the major lift, the baffled king composing
my God, right? Each person who writes in the chat box, when you write in the chat box, the practice of writing, right, which is not really available in an ordinary church, just notice what's happening here. We're creating this new space together. We're infusing technology with evolutionary love. We're, we're taking these new capacities and infusing them with evolutionary love. When I write, right, in the neuroscience, right, my, my colleague, Vessel Vanderkoop, I had lunch with a few years ago, a beautiful man who works with Lori, who's one of the participants in Evolutionary Church, right? Bessel van der Kolk wrote a book called The Body Keeps Score. And he has a chapter on where he talks about the neuroscience of writing, right? When I write, something happens. But I so I want to ask everyone write. Everyone write if you can. And when you write, you're not just writing for yourself, okay? Right? I'm homo amor, and I'm loving the moment open, right? It could be that you're going to write, and when you write, someone reads you, and that's exactly what happens in a unique self-symphony, and someone's blown away by what you wrote, and then they have the courage to write. So when you don't write, what you're doing is you're retracting, retreating into separate self, and you're saying, I don't need to write, right, because I'm in. But don't just write for yourself. Does everyone get that? If, if you got that, give me a yes, okay, in the chat box. Who's got that? Who's got that, right? Right, who's got that, right? I'm not just writing for myself, okay, and, and write in Dutch. If, you know, if, if English doesn't work for you, write in a different language, right? Has everyone got that? When I write, I'm writing to love it open. I'm writing because I actually realize I've got a word to write. It doesn't matter whether it's the same word that someone else wrote, but I'm writing it in my voice and we can feel the resonance of your voice, of your unique prophecy, of your unique yes. So we come to the chat box. We come to the chat box and we come right to pray. We come to pray because prayer affirms the dignity of personal need. So whoever has a prayer, Right, let's meet each other in the chat box and ask for everything. Ask for everything. Right, and Shot says, I pray to be audacious in stepping out as a prophetess, right, in clear words and what I have to offer. Right, can you feel that, Terry? I pray that I may clarify such that I hear the voice. And when I take a journey, I'm trying to hear the voice. Suzette, I pray to open my God voice so I speak the Dharma in the most beautiful way that moves myself and move, moves others. Right, Medea, I pray I am an outrageous prophet as prophet receiving and speaking the word of the divine she with pure audacious love and wisdom. Amen. Simona, right, Simona, prophetess, poetess of Eros, may each of right, my breath be a prayer, right? Right? Right. I'm always screaming the name of God. Right? Wrote Simona in one of her beautiful prophecies. Right? Right? Claire, Lirazi, I pray for my friend Binoy, who died suddenly last week and all those who loved him, and he was like 50, right? I pray to talk God in South Africa for the kids in the township, says Enika. Yes, Veronica, and Veronica, shift your, your panel to all panels and attendees so everyone can read you, okay? Everyone put all panels and attendees, right? Veronica says, I pray to overcome all perceived limitations, to open fearlessly to the purity of the infinity that I am in every moment, and so it is, right? Right, Oriana, yes, I am the voice signal of God, the prophetess, and I'm that, Oriana, you and I know when I clarify. When I clarify, I've got to take responsibility. There's enormous responsibility of being a prophet. Right? What I speak matters. What I speak changes the world. Okay, Jacqueline. Jacqueline, great, gorgeous poetess, right? Great prophetess. I pray for my writing to break hearts open. Yes, 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 Deneen. Right, to move past any imposed limitations and loving. Right, Claire, I pray for wisdom and patience in navigating my relationship with my sister. Right, details, says Claire. Pray for details, right? God's in the details. Linda, I pray to clearly hear God's voice and demonstrate God's presence with ease, right, and joy, right? Right, Kirsten Zohar, beloved, she says, I stand before you with humility and audacity and ask you to clarify my voice so it becomes your voice. Right? When our voices become one, Victor, I pray for a great new beginning to this new era. Jackie, I pray to forgive anyone against whom I still hold right, a wound. Nathan, Nathan, how's the second part of that song going, brother? Right? I pray that the human family core traumas be resolved to the deepest reverberation of reconciliation from the beginning of this moment and blessings, Nathan, into your relationship and everything that's going on there. And I'm, I'm so waiting for St. Nathan to find me and we get on the phone. We talk for a couple minutes late one night. So I'm waiting for you this week. Right? And Don Pet, I owe a phone call to. I tried to find him yesterday, but I didn't. So I've got to find Don. God willing, I'm going to try today. Right? Oh, my God. Or no. I pray that I will have the strength and courage every day to be the prophet. Right, Tom, I pray that I evolve love through, right, and through me, in me, as ways that utterly transform the beings in my world. Jill, 
right? Right. Jill and Henry pray that the flowering and ripening of the sacred human within ourselves in this church, right, be a gift to beloved earth and cosmos, right? Veronica, right? Yes, I pray to walk as love regardless, right? Fearless focus, right? The purity of infinity, right? Amen. Hans, right? I pray for my health. I pray for courage, right? And to pray for my health is huge, right? Right, I would all let's pray for our health and for each other's health, right? So I can transform my trauma and live outrageously loving, right? And I don't know, Don Pet, if you're here, right? I wrote you an email a couple of days ago, right? Wanting to find you, didn't hear back, right? I gave a buzz yesterday. So if you're here, right, leave a little note and I'll try you later today if that works. And if not, I'll just write you an email, right? Oh my God, and I pray for the civilian Kurds, right? In Syria, right? Gabi, right? Right, I, amen to health for everyone, right? Right, oh my God. And oh my God, a ho, right? Tracy, I pray for the healing of my family and myself. And let's, let's bind these prayers together. Because every one of us, my prayer is everyone's prayer. And everyone's prayer, right, is my prayer. Let's bind these prayers together. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's bind these prayers together and lift them right to the sky. Let's bind these prayers together, right? And lift them to the sky. Bless you. <laughs> thank you, Shahati. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. Let's open it up. Can we open it up, everyone? Are we ready to go? Are we ready to go, Don? Yes. Okay, Don, before the day's over, we've talked to each other. God willing. Yes, thank you, Don. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, my God. And if, you know, if someone, had, someone on our team can take Don's number and copy and paste it so I'll have it afterwards, that'd be awesome. Yay. Yay. Thank you, Shakti. You're awesome. Okay. Okay, are we ready? Are we ready to go all the way in this lifetime? Are we ready to love it open? Like, like we never have before. So here we go. So let's look at our, let's look today. And here's part three. Here's the next step, right? What is our code, right? What is our code? So let's find our code. See if we can find it. Maybe someone will cut and paste it, right? Right into the chat box. So we can actually look at it in the chat box right now in this very second. What is our code? What is our code? Is that code coming up? Our code is about unique risk. And I want to introduce something here, okay? And maybe we can take a look at what we call, right, our fifth key. And Sally Adams is working with me and Barbara, and we're doing this beautiful book called The Five Keys, right? So let's say if we can take a look, right, at our code. And what is our code? Our code is about accessing your unique risk, right, to actually be and live the deepest configuration of intimacy and desire that is evolution living in you as you and through you. So now step in, okay, we're gonna go all the way. Let's take a look for a second at the wheel of co-creation, which is our, one of our keys in the five keys, right? It's our symbol, it's our map. So see if we can see it on the screen for a second, okay? So this is the wheel of co-creation 2.0 that I actually wrote on a napkin, right? With Barbara having lunch in Portland. And Barbara had done wheel 1.0, I did wheel 2.0. And Barbara and I, this was our merging of memes and we agreed that the wheel 2.0, that's the wheel going forward. And one of the things that I did with Barbara, right, and I, I spent many, many hours talking to, to beloved Barbara as she would share with me, right, deep, deep ideas moving in her heart. I would share with her deep ideas and, and memes moving in my heart. And we joined Genius, and I shared with Barbara this idea of desire. And what we did is, right, I placed desire at what we call the heart of the hub of the wheel. So if you take a look at the wheel, if you can kind of lean forward a second, lean forward a second from wherever you are, take a look at the wheel. At the heart of the hub of the wheel, it says desire and heart's desire. Does everyone see that? So what I said to Barbara was, is that actually the prism of revelation, right? and you should have seen Barbara jump out of her seat, it was one of Barbara's great, great geniuses, was her capacity to get excited about the Dharma as it evolved. And she came to us in the last five years of her life because she said, oh my God, this is where it's, it's moving, it's evolving here, right? It's alive here, it's awake here, I want to be here with you. And we came together and we shared so much with each other. We shared so much and I wanna step into this place. So let's start from right here. At the heart of the hub of the wheel is heart's desire. You can actually see it in front of you. And what that means is, is that actually desire's not local. There is no local desire. There is no local desire any place in the world. Desire is always part of the field of desire. And what I actually begin to realize is that my deepest heart's desire is the desire of the divine. It's the rapture of divinity. 
It's God, goddess's desire living in me, as me, and through me. And until I access my deepest heart's desire, I'm actually not aligned with my longing. I want to live aligned with my longing. And I have an inconsolable longing to actually overcome the crisis of desire in my life and to actually feel the pulsing, throbbing, tumescent explosion of desire as the core quality of my life. Now, we've exiled desire, right? We say desire only lives in sexuality at a very narrow moment in time with one narrow person, right? And it feels a particular way and then it goes away. And we spend the rest of our lives yearning to recover that fleeting moment of desire, which we never do. Because desire always evolves. That's a mistake. The sexual models eros. It doesn't exhaust eros. And desire lives right in a billion points of light. Desire lives in my creativity. Desire lives in my innovation. Desire lives if I'm with my romantic partner as I kiss my romantic partner's shoulder for an hour. Right? Desire doesn't only live in a particular kind of sexuality. It lives in every kind of touching. It lives when we touch our friend's heart. It lives when we touch nature. It lives when, when goddess and God touches us through nature. Right? Desire lives every place and everywhere. And when you're in desire and you actually realize the dignity of desire and the divinity of desire, your life becomes whole. And you realize not only right, is there dignity and di divinity to desire, not only is there dignity and divinity to desire, desire is ultimately unique. Desire is never the same. You are a unique configuration of desire. And your ultimate desire is for intimacy. I want to make deeper contact and I want to explode my desire into my unique creativity, which is my unique gift, which is my unique word. It's my unique voice, right? It's my unique incarnation. Right? It's the unique way of being, loving, laughing, and living in the world that's mine and mine alone. My unique desire, my unique configuration of desire is evolution's desire. It's God's desire. It's goddess's desire awakening in me, as me, and through me. And when I'm in my desire, I don't have an answer to the meaning of life because there's no question. Right? Desire doesn't answer the question of the meaning of life. When I'm living my heart's desire, when I've accessed my deepest heart's desire, and when I'm willing to take the lid off, and to go all the way in this lifetime, living, being, giving, speaking, creating from within my deepest heart's desire that I'm a prophet. The prophet accesses desire. You cannot be a prophet unless you access desire. We have an image of a prophet which is mistaken. Right? The great mystics say the prophet is bat melech. The prophet is the daughter of the king, meaning the goddess. Right? The prophet is the candle in the wind as Elton John sang for Diana after she passed because she was accessing right, a glimmer, a, a shard of the goddess, but couldn't quite get there because she couldn't clarify. But we felt her yearning. Right? She, she was touching and there were moments when she could find it, when she was working with kids and working with the oppressed. There were moments where she came alive and she could find it. But, but Diana was, she was, that, she was the ordinary human being who was finding the princess, right? The candle in the wind, but we're all a candle in the wind. We all have a unique deepest heart's desire. We're all royalty. We're all royalty. We're all sons and daughters of kings, kings and queens, princes and princesses, but it's not a metaphor. It's not a metaphor. Right? Reality manifested the notion of royalty in order to actually indicate, to point towards, right? To reveal, to disclose the inner nature of the human being. But we exiled royalty to a couple of people, to a man and a woman and their kids and to their bloodline. But we are all of the bloodline of royalty. We are all of Magdalene in Christ. We are all Christed. We are all Buddhas. We're all in the Buddha field. We're all Lao We're all Moses, right? The voice of Moses, eat Moshe Bechol Dara. Right? We say in Aramaic, Moses lives in every person and in every voice and in every generation. But to get there, to get there, you've got to be willing right, to do the heroic, audacious, fierce, quiveringly tender, right, joyful work, the gorgeous play, right, of clarifying your heart's desire, of knowing your true desire, right, because actually there's pseudo desire, there's pseudo eros, there's desire that actually takes us off in a way and alienates us. When we're alienated from our longing, when we're alienated from our desire, then we fall into the emptiness and we seek to cover the emptiness with every form of pseudo desire. But when we clarify our heart's desire, when we can actually speak our deepest heart's desire, then for the first time, we can take our unique risk. We can take our unique risk. And to be a prophet is to take your unique risk. The prophet speaks truth to power. 
right? The, the prophet speaks truth in the places where truth can't be spoken. The prophet doesn't hide behind the petty fig leaves of political correctness. The prophet doesn't hide behind the petty fig leaves of fundamentalism. The prophet doesn't hide behind the fig leaves of ego disguised in all of her distressing disguises. The prophet is egoless. The prophet is unique self. The prophet is exploding with desire. So, oh my God, are we willing to be prophets? Are we willing to clarify our heart's desire to be goddesses desire? So Barbara, Barbara, you and I talked about this so much and I'm so wildly delighted in this continuity of consciousness in which your voice still speaks with us to turn the voice to you, right? To turn the voice to Barbara in your unique voice, right? To speak these words as you feel them and as they move through you, right? So we turn the word to Barbara now to take us these last eight minutes, to take us all the way home. So are you ready, Christina, to help? You ready to bring Barbara in? So here we go, take it away. Thank you, Mark. I, I take the word from you and from Lisa and bring it into the word of God's desire for each of us. It is an awesome thought that my deepest heart's desire <clears throat> is the universe's deepest heart's desire through me, as me, and uniquely as me. Because it was always God is here desiring something and I have my own personal desire. But if we understand that our heart's desire is coming straight from the nature of God itself through us, there's an enormous empowerment to desire that comes here. And then I always say in my own heart's desire, what is it that I'm really desiring? And in the broadest sense, I find I'm desiring exactly what the 13.7 billion years <clears throat> of evolution desires. It desires greater consciousness. So let's say whatever our unique desire is, we all desire that inner impulse of consciousness itself. <clears throat> the second great desire of universal creativity is freedom. Freedom for everyone to be more fully and uniquely who we are. And as we are beginning this in the evolutionary church, which is new in, in, in history, this is new. We are taking God's desire for freedom for the individual into our own ability to be free through the consciousness of the impulse of creation. <clears throat> this is an enormous understanding of freedom. And then the third part of God's desire through us is for greater complexity or connectivity or love. Ever more complex system with ever greater connectivity of separate particles making <clears throat> a new whole far greater than the sum of our parts. So let's put all of that in there. And then I've been thinking about the church of evolutionary love. We've really named the evolutionary church, the church of evolutionary love. What do we mean by evolutionary love? Mark has called it outrageous love, and a synonym for outrageous love is evolutionary love. And he's, that the only response to outrageous pain is evolutionary love in every one of us, which is outrageous love. And that the church of evolutionary love, perhaps for the first time ever, is for the fulfillment of the unique configuration of intimacy and desire within its mission and within its members. So when we enter the evolutionary church with our unique intimacy of desire, seeing it as evolutionary love along the pathway of the core of the spiral itself, at the very hub of the wheel of co-creation, 
creation desiring through us this. <clears throat> so when evolutionary love is shared within a collective configuration where everyone's unique love goes beyond, goes through the true self, through the unique self, into the evolutionary unique self, empowered by the intimacy of God desiring through you, through me. And when I connect my unique desire to God's desire, then I have to ask myself, what is my truly heart's desire if I go the whole way with it in this lifetime? So let's each of us ask right now within ourselves, what is my deepest heart's desire, which is God desiring through me going the whole way in this lifetime, joining with all others doing the same in a unique self-symphony of the birth of the new humanity in the new world. That's my deepest heart's desire, to go the whole way in this lifetime. And why should we be going the whole way in this lifetime? Because this is the lifetime when God has to go through the whole way to create the next stage of life on earth. Because if we don't go the whole way collectively in this lifetime, in this next 20, 50 years, whatever that may be, the, the world itself cannot go the whole way, whole way. So we are the evolutionary church of going the whole way in this lifetime, being a beacon of light for people everywhere on earth who are yearning to go the whole way. And we're inviting them to be participants in the evolutionary church of love, to fulfill the highest destiny of each of us collectively and individually for an awakening of a planet where all of our great new capacities are connected through us in a glorious celebration of the uniqueness of human creativity through God. And with this, I ask for your gift of divine desire to be fulfilled through the growth of the church of evolutionary love. Your gift of divine desire planted into the church of evolutionary love, providing the church with the resources and outreach and capacities to invite the entire world into the divine desire in time to go the whole way in this lifetime. This is a truly great request for resources, finances, contributions. You see your contribution makes a difference. Click on that contribution there on our chat box and you will see that you are contributing to the evolutionary love of humanity. Thank you, thank you, God. And I pass my word to you, Mark. Thank you, Barbara. And thank you, Mark. Yeah. I take the word. Thank you, thank you. And when our last minute, and the word for money in Hebrew, kesef, K-E-S-E-F. In our last minute, someone maybe write it in the chat box. Thank you so much, Barbara. K-E-S-E-F means desire. Kisufim comes from the book of Psalms. Nichsafa nafshi, right? Lael chai. My heart desires the living presence, right, of eros of divinity. So when when I actually can find my way and translate it, I often say the holiest day of the year is the the year when a country allocates its budget. It's where we actually are willing, right, to actually spend. So we're asking everyone to do fifty dollars a month to actually become part of, right, to live into and to resource us as we're putting up our website, right, literally in these weeks. Okay, so, oh my God, friends, 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 right, friends, we need each other. We need each other's voices. We need to look in each other's eyes and love each other madly. We're a band of outrageous lovers. We're finding our deepest heart's desire 
And one of our intentions for the church, and I'm going to be talking with lots of people in these next few weeks as we go to the next stage, and we're going to be talking together, and Christina Amon's going to step in and take on a, a next stage, right, in kind of holding the host role, right, as the executive producer. And I'm going to step in the next level, and we're going to invite other people to step in with us. But as we take this next step, we're taking this next step to actually unfold this revolution, to unfold this revolution which the world needs so desperately. And it's a revolution of the democratization of prophecy. It's the democratization of enlightenment, right? It's the birth of homo amor, who is the fulfillment of homo sapien. It's the ability to go all the way in this lifetime. It's to know that your voice matters, that you have a unique contribution that's unlike any other. But we can only do it when we love each other madly. And that's our methodology, right? Is the outrageous love as we look in each other's eyes and we say to each other, Christina to hell, we say, how could anyone ever tell you that you are anything less than beautiful? How could anyone ever tell you that you are less than whole? Thank you, Libby Roderick. Take us the last step. Have a gorgeous day and a gorgeous week. Let's make this revolution. How could anyone ever ever tell you Invite everyone. You're anything less than beautiful. How could anyone ever tell you you were less than whole? You're gonna get a link to your chat box. How could send it to all your friends. To oh my God. That you're loving is me. Madly loving each other. How deeply you're I connected. Got tears in my eyes. Madly my loving each other. You feel it, friends? Oh my God. How could anyone ever tell you you were anything less than beautiful? How could anyone ever tell you you were less than whole? How could anyone fail to notice that your loving is a miracle? How deeply you're connected to my soul? Could anyone ever tell you? How could anyone ever tell you you were anything less than beautiful? How could anyone ever tell you you were less than and whole how could anyone fail to notice that your loving is a miracle how deeply you're connected to my soul how could anyone ever tell you you were anything less than beautiful how could anyone ever tell you you were less than whole how could anyone fail to notice that your loving is a miracle? How deeply you're connected to my soul. How could anyone ever tell you you were anything less than beautiful? How could anyone ever tell you you were less than whole? How could anyone fail to notice that your loving is a miracle, how deeply you're connected to my soul.